Because we place so much emphasis on the deadlift setup, it almost goes without saying that we're going to set our back for the pull. And we'll have more to say about that setup and its relationship to the pull in a forthcoming episode. But the deadlift is unique. It doesn't ever come up until, well, until it comes up during the lift. This sets it apart from the squat, press, and bench, all of which get lifted before the first rep of the set. What's that you say? What in the world are you talking about, Sully? Are you daft? How does the bar get lifted before the first rep? Why, during the zeroth rep, of course. Hi, I'm Jonathan Sullivan and welcome back to Graysteel. The zeroth rep is the rep before the first rep and it's a thing. It's the special rep that brings the bar out of the hooks. And it's a damn important rep, the rep that lays the groundwork for the entire set. Those of you who train with me have all, at one time or another, muttered to yourself something like, if he says chest up or pinch and tuck or elbows high one more time, I swear I am going to do something awful. Don't deny it. I hear things. Hey, it's okay. I forgive you. But I'm not going to shut up about these things because they're important. These cues direct the lifter to put his biophysical affairs in order to prepare for the next rep. And here's the thing. All of these factors tend to degrade during the set. Every rep, it gets harder to keep the elbows bunched up under the press, harder to keep that pinch and tuck and arch for the bench, and harder to keep that all important Superman chest. All of these biophysical optimizations decay from one rep to the next which means that there's a good chance they'll never be better or stronger than they are at the beginning of the set, which begins with that zeroth rep. The implications of this reasoning are straightforward. It is during the zeroth rep, when the bar is unracked, that all of these preparations must already be in place, intensively and aggressively, because that's your best chance to get them right. If you unrack the bar for the squat with a Quasimodo back and loose shoulders and an empty chest, don't expect to get into a stellar thoracic extension with work set weight precariously loaded on a squishy upper back. You can try to get tight with that heavy load on your back or in your hands, and try you must, but it just won't be as good as if you did it properly to begin with. When you get under the bar to squat, you must set that bar hard in the right place. Get those hands in tight to wedge the bar on your back. Get that huge chest full of air and set your back into aggressive, rigid extension before you take any of the weight on your back. When that zeroth rep comes out of the hooks, you have to be as tight and big chested and intense as if you were about to set a world record. When you take the bench out of the hooks for the zeroth rep, you already have your stance locked down, leg drive already pushing your upper back hard into the bench, chest already full of air, your pinch and tuck already lined up. You'll complete it when the bar is over the shoulder joints. When you unrack a press for the zeroth rep, you already have a superman chest, elbows in front, thorax full of air, back already ramrod, arms already bunched up tight under the bar because you'll never have a better chance to get these things locked down until the next set. It may not go in the log, it may not be part of the program, and it may not count to most people watching, but the zeroth rep should count to you because in many ways, it's the most important rep of the entire set. Give it the corresponding respect. Next time, we'll talk about the omega rep when we rack the bar. Yeah. That's important too. Thanks for watching. Until next time, stay strong and stay healthy.